Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to another Euro Truck Simulator uh, video from me. I seem to have picked up quite a lot of subscribers who love my trucking videos, so uh, I am I am aware that you guys love me making these things, and you are sending me so many suggestions on Facebook. Uh, it's great. You're sending me links to mods, and I'm, it's so hard trying to find time to check them out. But in this video, we are going to break from the norm, okay? As you can see straight away, this is not a Scania. Uh, my uh, company is still full of Scanias. If we go to the uh, truck manager, you'll see we've got a suite of Scanias and this rogue Volvo. A lot of people have been requesting that I check out the Volvo. People are attracted to the Volvo, of course, because it has very powerful engines. So one of the first things I'm going to do is do a quick upgrade on this. So I'm back at... Uh, Back at the garage here, just going to go into the upgrade shop. The most important thing we're going to need today for what I have planned is this. We're going to need the 820 brake horsepower engine, that's 611 kilowatts, and a boatload of torque, 3,900 newton meters of torque. That's a lot. It's a big old engine. In terms of the actual truck itself, this is the Volvo. FH16 Globetrotter. It's not a bad looking truck, as I've said before, if it wasn't for the Scanias, I think I'd probably steer towards the Volvo. Um, not, not, I mean, the Scania front end is, I think, a better looking vehicle, but functionally, I think the Volvo is a very good truck, very reliable. And the engines, of course, are the big attraction. As you can see, I've got the twin rear axles, but if you can just notice there, uh, the very rear axle is has twin wheels, this one only has single, so we're going to fix that. We're going to go for the 6x4 chassis instead of the 6x2 4 chassis. So there you go, we've got 10 wheeler going on now. Like I say, we're going to need this. You'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> Let's see what else we can do. We've got the Globetrotter XL uh, cabin, which is this extra fairing here, which is obviously for aerodynamics, pushes the air around the trailer. So we've got top line in pretty much everything here, apart from transmission, which the only difference between that one and that one is this is the R. Not entirely sure what the difference is, but I'm not spending eight grand to find out. Let's go inside. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Inside, we have the standard interior. As you can see, it's quite a nice interior, all things being said. Very conservative, light browns, blacks, very functional tons of buttons lots of buttons here that haven't got labels on them i assume that's a modeling thing I, I would assume in the real truck you get a lot of gadgets you know electric seats heated seats maybe aircon you know all, all the works i would have thought but i'm not a not a volvo driver so if you are a volvo driver maybe you can tell me then we've got the exclusive which adds a little bit of zest as you can see, we've got the, the light browns, beiges, and this kind of weird magenta trim, and the FH16 on the door there. Uh, I don't know if this is a a male colour. I think it's probably more of a female colour, to, to be honest. So I'm going to stick with the, the sedate black. Blacks and greys, very neutral. Spill your coffee and your breakfast on it, doesn't matter. Exterior-wise... Um, I could just go and get an upgrade on the paint shop, so I'll probably do that. I'm, I'm not going to pick the colour here. Uh, it's charged me three grand, so let's, let's just drop that down to the basic one. Go for the stormy blue, or we could just go with a straight midnight black. Actually, I think we'll do that. I'm not going to spend too much money on this truck because I am trying to review some trucks now, so I don't intend to keep them. It's not really worth splashing out a whole lot of money. I tell you, there is one upgrade that I fancy, though. Look at this. On the door mirrors here. Look at this chrome. Oh, doesn't doesn't that look so nice? If it, if I was keeping this truck, I would most definitely have chrome rather than plastic. I think it finishes it off quite nicely. But as I say, I'm not going to do that. Again, up top, um, I could start adding these light bars up here, um, sticking a whole lot of lights. But again, I don't think I'm going to bother get rid of that. I'm not going to upgrade. That's not the point of the video, really. 
could make this look really nice. I mean, we've even only got the basic wheels, but we could go up to something rather nice here. Not sure about the red. Don't think that works. Standard rims. Although the standard rims do look good. I mean, the chrome against the chrome wheel, I ring, I, uh, the chrome mirror would look pretty nice. Uh, Interior-wise, we've got standard plates, which I'm not going to put on. Mirrors. The stock or the stock long. Interesting difference. The sun visor. We've got a £1,700 sun visor on there. I'd rather see it from the, this on the outside, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. That's, I think that quite works, actually. How much was that? Um, what's that? 600 quid. Yeah, go on. Let, let's splash out. Let's go with that. Total to pay, 35 grand. And we've got to put a um, paint on the outside, but I'm not going to bother. Lots of mirrors. Look at this. We've got a long mirror here. Um, a wide-angle mirror, though. We've got another mirror here for seeing cyclists and stuff down the door. And then another one here. That's a huge amount of visibility. Of course, this side we only get the, the standard mirrors, but you can look out the window, which comes for free on most trucks. So let's go with that. Thirty-five and a half thousand pounds. Uh, don't need to service. Paint shop. We're not going to bother with. Let's have a look. Get rid of that. There we go. It's not bad, is it? Personally, I think the tires need some uh, tire wall paint on them or what do they call it back to black i think it's called in the uk makes the tire rims look nice and black that's what it needs did you see that thing going past there do you see that <laughs> that's what i'm gonna go and try and get a job for that is a beast we'll see that in a second i have got a number of mods installed which i should take you through uh, let's just reverse up here I'll show you where we are and what we're about to do next. Freight markets. We are in Felixstowe, and you will notice some strange and wonderful things when we flick through here. Uh, there's the Boabab tree. That's the one we're going to try and take. Unfortunately, it's a very short journey, and I wanted something a bit bigger. The main thing to notice about this is the weight: 55 tons. That is a beast. 55 tons. That's why I've cracked out a Volvo with 800 brake horsepower. That's exactly why, so that we can pull this mammoth thing. You may also notice these company names here, obviously recognizable, Coca-Cola, FedEx, um, you know, Skoda, <laughs> Skoda, Ikea. They're all here. Um, that is a, a mod I've got installed, but only one part of a mod. I'm obviously, as I always do, I'm going to list all the mods I use in the video in the video description, so that's where you can go and get them from. In terms of my other mods I've got installed, we've got the sports car mod, which maybe we'll see in a second if I click around. Are we Are going to see the sports cars? There you go, the sports car. We've all seen that one before. I've got flatbed trailers. Uh, I've got crane parts, and I've got a cement mixer. The cement mixer is something that I really want to find, but it's so elusive. You see it now and again, and it's always n not in a town that you could ever get to in time to pick up. The elusive cement mixer. Anyway, um, we haven't got the job that I want at the moment, so let's get back in our cab here. And maybe let's go and drive around. What's the nearest rest stop, actually? Bring up the map. Okay, you can see we've got a Coca-Cola factory here, which is quite a nice bit of relabeling. So let's... Actually, is there a rest stop in here? Quite a nice sounding truck. Hey, we can rest. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to take a rest there. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. I'll turn the engine off. Ooh, that was a horrible sound. It sounded like a, a, a sewing machine stopping. Yeah, let's grab some rest. Let's see if the job's changed to something cool. Coming out of Felix, though. <gasps> the cement mixer! Oh my god! The cement mixer! I don't believe it! Oh no, and the tree! Oh, now I'm so torn. Did we take the massive tree through the death tolls of France? 
Oh, do we take the... Oh, it's only up the road. Look at this. Wait a second. This is 650 quid to take it from Felixstowe to Felixstowe. Genius. Absolute genius. Offer expires in five minutes. Are you kidding me? I can't get there in five minutes. The game is trolling me, people. <laughs> I really want to take it. Because apparently the thing spins around when you drive. And it's, the game's just teasing me. It's just dangling the damn thing in front of me going, ah, ha, ha. You can have it if you can get there in five minutes. It's not going to happen. So, do I take the tree through the deathly roads of France? That's the question. And all the toll roads that that entails for £21,800. Or do we sleep and see what happens next? I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. Otherwise, that would be a night drive for a start, which I don't relish. So let's try our luck. Let's go for 4am. It's the middle of the night. I don't mind setting out at 4am because I like the dawn as you're driving. It's very enjoyable. And let's see what we can pick up. Come on, Mr. Tree. There's Mr. Tree. There's two of them. No cement mixers. Right, so we can go to Nuremberg or we can go to Leon. That job's still available. Or Nuremberg. Or cross the ferry. That's the ferry crossing, isn't it? Taken that route before. Leon is a horrible drive through France. I mean, France is scenic. It's just those bloody toll roads. So I'm not sure which way to go on this one. 22 grand and 21 grand, so the money's not that different. That's going to be interesting, going through the toll roads of France. That, <laughs> that could get messy. Maybe for that reason I should do it. Or do I take the easy option and go to Nuremberg? I don't know. Screw it. Let's go hard. Let's go to France. Okay. I like the starting noise of this truck. Let's get some lights on here. I don't like the stopping noise. I like the dashboard. Nice clear display. Let's just assume we've had breakfast, shall we? We've got a full tank of gas. Or fuel, or petrol, or diesel, or whatever you want to bloody call it. Let's go and pick this job up. Maybe I should put my headlights on and get flashed constantly. Okay, we're in Britain. Left hand drive. The other thing I've done, and I don't know how this is going to work out, it will be interesting. I've installed a mod. It's called an AI Traffic Enhancement Mod or something. Don't quote me on that name. I think that's not exactly right. But what it purports to do is sort out the mess that is the AI traffic. And interestingly enough, when you download it, there are uh, different variations that you can download. So you can download it with um, light traffic, medium traffic, or heavy traffic. And you can download those three with or without a speed limiter. So I've gone for heavy traffic without a speed limiter and the reason I don't like the speed limiter because people say to me why don't you use the speed limiter because that's that's realistic truck drivers have to use a speed limiter you should have one uh, and that's true um, the reason I don't have a speed limiter is because I think it's actually harder without the speed limiter you can come a cropper with speed cameras a lot more often if you don't have a speed limiter but yes I do accept that you wouldn't be doing 90 miles per hour uh, in a truck. Has that gone to green? Yes, it has. In a truck that's uh, got a giant tree on the back. Not that I intend to do that this time, but it'll probably end up happening. Anyway, it's your choice. Speed limits or not, it's your choice. It's your sim. Play it how you want. Whoa, this is a bit narrow. Um, so I've downloaded that. Now... That's supposed to do a number of things, and I'll read out the... Um, as we start driving, I'll read out the effects that it's supposed to have. Because it does change quite a lot. It's not flashing me. I know I've got my lights on. Dim those headlights. This looks like us. For some reason, IKEA. Um, IKEA deal in furniture, as we all know. 
mo mostly flat pack furniture from Scandinavia. For some reason, they've got a giant tree that they want to get rid of. I'm going to take it off their hands and take it down to Lyon in France. Kern and Nagel. Now that, that sounds Scandinavian. That's an interesting company name right there. Because that almost seems to fit the whole Ikea theme. Well, we're in a wood factory, so that's good. Can't say this would be by Ikea, but then again... Maybe this is where they, they're manufacturing stuff. Holy crap! Whoa, hang on a sec. How are we supposed to pick that up? Honestly, how are we supposed to pick that up? That's... What the actual hell? It's bigger than the... I'm going to have to turn around for a start, but it's bigger than the... Um, than the normal size trailer, so it's in front of its box. So do I need to reverse into the white box bit, or do I need to reverse into the normal front bit? <laughs> and then we're going to have to lock onto it at 90 degrees. Oh dear, this... This could go horribly wrong. And I can't go round either. Well, knock on. <laughs> well, a good guess. That was a good guess. Look at this! Unbelievable! My god, that is a massive tree. Dear me! Right, well, uh, let's move forward. And pull this 58 ton piece of wood. Bloody hell. I can feel the weight. You can, you can hear the engine struggling. We need to have a look at this thing, but it's not exactly the ideal lighting conditions. So what I'm going to do... Let's quickly inspect the truck the trailer here. Whoa, when you brake, it takes ages to slow down. Look at that. I like the way they've got the cut in it as well. I love the shine. Look at that reflective tree surface. Oh, we're inside it. <laughs> Let's get on the road, and when it gets a bit lighter, we'll, uh, we'll have a good inspection of this thing, because that looks pretty epic. Navigate my way through this bit here. Uh, left, we're going left. I know, geezer. You really don't want this thing in your face. I think I might have clipped. I can't, I can't actually see the back of the trailer. It's just enormous. Even when you look in the mirrors. This is a serious trailer. I think I've got the right vehicle for it. 800 brake scan here. 4.15 in the morning. You should be able to get on the motorway. Feel, can you feel the weight? I'm full throttle here. Absolutely full throttle and we're going over a humpback bridge. Oh dear lord. That was a bit late, but never mind. Uh oh. <laughs> Problem number one. We can't go this way. And I've beat the truck. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I can't get unbeached. We've actually beached the whole thing. <laughs> oh god. I'm gonna get out of this. I cannot physically move, I've got no friction. I can't go backwards and I can't go forwards. No fucks given by him. Somebody give me a push, please. I don't actually understand what we've clipped on, if I'm honest. That's really weird. That's. I think the game's just unable to cope with the physics of the trailer. And it's beached us. We're screwed. Absolutely screwed. I don't see any way out of this. I think we're going to have to call for assistance. Bugger and damnation. Hmm. It might be time to load it back in. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Load it back in and go a different way, I think, is the answer here. 
Right, I'm back. So, luckily enough, it did an autosave just before I picked the trailer up. Which is rather nice of the game. Lock on. So, we're going to try that again. But we're going to go a different way. Now that's worried me, although we don't... I've never seen those little humpback bridges before. They're not very common. But we are going to have to plan a slightly different route to the, uh, the crossing. Right, let's just stop here and have a look at the map. Okay, so turning left is a really, really bad idea. What we actually want to do is turn right and then right and right again. That's how we'll go. We're going to have to stick to the main roads. We're going to have to be very careful about these small roads. Wow. Okay, crisis averted. I tell you what, it's a good job I've got auto saving. That could have turned very nasty indeed. Oh no, no, you don't, no, don't let me go, pal. That's actually a really bad plan. No, I don't want to go. I don't want to. I'm just going to go back into my little hole and you carry on. Because if I turn, you're going to have a 58 ton tree in your face. So don't be silly. Thank you for being nice. Really appreciate it. But in this particular instance, I bet he does the same. Ah! <laughs> How often are the AI this friendly? And, when the, and they're friendly when you don't want them to be. Basically, I'm going to have to sit here until there's no traffic coming from that direction and then just go. You, you can wait. You can wait, pal. You can wait for me. Okay. No offence, but I've got a bigger delivery than you and I'm more important. And I'm bigger. I probably weigh the best part of 60 plus tonnes and... Actually, how much do I weigh? 58 tonne tree. And we've got the weight of the trailer. Unless that was including the tree. Probably not. So we've got the weight of the trailer, the weight of the tree, plus the weight of my fuel, plus the weight of my truck. That's going to be a, quite a lot. And a guess? What do you think? You guys, truckers out there watching this, you probably have a much better idea. I'm going to plumb for a guess at 65 tonnes. But... If you've got a better idea, then do do post a comment and let me know what, what weight that would be. But that's a hell, hell of a weight, isn't it? A hell of a weight. You notice the auto route hasn't updated. It's not actually telling me... Oh, there you go. Now it's done it. Oh, look at these pink houses. Ooh. Deeply unpleasant. Oh, my God. I can't stop. <gasps> Holy cow. I'm really going to have to be careful in this thing. It is pretty beast though, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. 6x4 axles and an 800 brake horsepower engine. <clears throat> it's the only way to fly. This is going to take some careful driving. What are we stopping here for? Honestly? One car got out? What's that guy got in front though? Looks like charcoal or stone. No, it's stone, isn't it? Yeah, it's just rubble. I thought it was charcoal at first. So, I'm wondering about this AI traffic thing. Now, I expect less traffic at night, so. But I did put the heavy traffic in, so hopefully we'll start seeing some serious traffic, which is going to make it all the more fun in this thing. Wow. Holy crap. I I just clipped the roundabout. I've got a feeling this is going to go horribly wrong when we get into France. I'm just going to drive down the middle. Because quite frankly, I should have a police escort for this. <laughs> Everybody needs to give way to me, as far as I'm concerned today. If I want two lanes, I'm having two lanes. I'm quite grateful for the sheer amount of mirrors on this Volvo. And we're almost back at the point where the little crossing would have taken us now. 
I think that's average speed cameras above us. But I'll be lucky if I break any speed limits today. Look, 30 miles an hour, I've just managed to get up to 26. But they are average, so that's the starting point there. And we're going to get measured all the way around the corner here. People have said to me, why don't I use cruise control? Which is an interesting point I should raise. The reason I don't use cruise control is because I have, on my joystick, I have a little analogue paddle that I use for throttle. So if you imagine if I have it slid all the way down, I reverse. If I have it slid all the way forward, I go forward. And if I have it in the middle, I don't, I don't move at all. In other words, I can't use cruise control because I'm not, I don't get up to speed and then hit cruise control. The speed is, is driven by the position of the paddle. So I can't, is, is the uh, bottom line, I can't use cruise control. Alright, we've gone up to 60. If I take this bloody thing up to 60 miles per hour, the braking distance when I hit the brakes is going to be colossal. I am hoping I can get this on the ferry, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the problems ahead now, and uh, with, a, with a, a cargo this big, I've seen problems before in... in um, toll boots in France which I, which I managed to counter in one of my previous videos by you know, what you can do is actually detach the trailer, drive forward, buy your ticket, reverse back, reattach the trailer and then drive through, otherwise the barrier comes down and clips through your um, your trailer god this is going to struggle up here I'm trying to keep some momentum oh my shit I think it just ruined the suspension did you hear that? <gasps> I didn't think I was that far over. Good God, I was trying to keep momentum up. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to be left of this Volvo by the time I finish with it. I hope you guys can feel the weight, because it is just insane. I'm quite happy to be on the motorway, actually. We've got a long drive ahead, 572 miles, but the sun's about to come up, and that's going to be a lot more pleasant to drive in. Hopefully, it should be daytime by the time we get to France, because France, although it's a pain in the ass with its toll roads, it does have some quite nice scenery. Incidentally, if you don't know why France has so many toll roads, I think I'm true in saying this, it's because they don't have any road tax. I don't know which countries around the world have road tax, but in the UK we do, so every vehicle, well, almost every vehicle, there are some exempt ones, but most vehicles then have to pay the government every year and get um, road tax, which is like a, a a circular thing you put in your wind in your windscreen or your windshield to show that you've paid your tax. It's valid for twelve months or six months. And depending on what what kind of vehicle you are, you pay less or more road tax. Some of them, like the hybrid vehicles and the electric vehicles, they don't pay any. Uh, cars, the road tax they pay goes off the emissions which is all done by emissions now. It used to be engine size and things like that, but they're trying to go environmentally friendly. Christ, I'm in the wrong lane again. Pay attention, Paul. Um, but trucks pay a lot of money in road tax because, to be fair, they do cause a lot of damage to the roads, you know? You only have to look in the slow lane of a motorway to realise the grooves that they, they're carving out with the sheer weight. Uh, they cause a lot of damage, so they pay quite a bit. But apparently, in France, this guy's not... It's just acting like a dick. Move over. Uh, in France, they don't pay road tax, from what I've heard. Speed camera's coming up. I'm slowing right down. Oh my god, slow down, slow down. Uh, so that's why they have so many toll roads, basically to pay for the roads. The same way that the road tax pays for our roads in the UK, that's what toll roads are for in France. Whether trucks have to pay extra on top, I don't know. I mean, it does slow traffic down, that's the, the downside, because the traffic has to keep stopping at toll roads all of the time. The benefit they get is that other cars from Europe have to give them money. So, you know, right now, a German car could drive over here and use our roads for a week, drive back and pay absolutely nothing. Doesn't pay road tax and we don't have many toll roads. In France, that's not true. Everybody using their roads pays. So in some respects, it's a fairer system. Whether it's the right system, I don't know. Taking in the uh, scenery here now. 
lights are going to go shortly. When we get to the ferry, I think that's when I'll pull up outside and we'll do a proper visual inspection. We should have plenty of daylight by then. Even getting fuel. I mean, fuel should be doable looking at that. I should be able to pull into a place like that and fill up. Look at the distance there, the water towers. Same style as in uh, DayZ and Armour. Marianne couldn't find a job. Well, I'm sorry Marianne, but if you do that again, you'll be looking for another job. You're not going to be working for, for trucking nuts if you carry on like that. We'll find some work. That's not very resourceful. Cost me £1,800. Just slowing down here because um, the last bend I took, I didn't take it very well, <laughs> if we're being honest about it. So, I just want to assess how sharp it is. Lord knows if they stop in front of me, you know, I won't be stopping. This feels like a proper drive, I'll be honest with you. This, this really feels like a, um, a heavy load. The physics is behaving correctly. The, the truck is struggling to pull. When I try and brake, it's struggling to stop. And then there's a the sheer volume of it, which is just colossal, this thing. Let's kind of straight bit and have a look from the outside. There we go. I mean, look at that. Whoops. <laughs> okay, that costs 300 quid to do that. Just clip that guy. Looks pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. Let's get rid of that display. There's a speed camera down here, but I don't think... Let's just double check. I don't think I'm uh, speeding. That's beautiful. The sunset at the back as well. It seems to be, certainly seems to be longer than a normal trailer. Higher and wider, but not oversized like some of the some of the oversized stuff that I've pulled in the in previous videos. You know, it's not insanely big. It's just big. It's just properly big, and heavy, dense. You know. When you look out the window, you just can't see anything. So we're approaching problem number one. Problem number one is going to be the ferry. Don't know what to expect. So if I remember on the ferry, uh, depending on what kind of ferry crossing, there is a big ramp that goes down to it. So I'm thinking getting down might be okay, but getting up I might get beached again. I'm getting worried about that bridge. Um, that could be a bit of a problem. That could be a bit of a problem. In which case this video could end. <laughs> if I can't deliver the goods, I can't make the video. And this will be a, uh, a video about a tree that is not deliverable <laughs> in Eurotruck. What was interesting though when I crossed that bridge was the way that the... If you looked at it, it didn't really look like I was beached properly. But something had happened in the physics. The, the, the bounding box of the tree had managed to lift my my rear wheels off the ground so I couldn't get any traction. If it had kept going maybe 60 miles per hour limit if it had kept going then maybe the momentum of the tree would have just pushed me over anyway I'm not sure God I love that sunrise. I love that sunrise Oh look at this This is a depiction I think of the Dartford No it's not the Dartford Crossing, we're nowhere near Dartford uh, or are we? We're kind of in, we're kind of vaguely in the area. Oh, Alpha no, Crossing's here. I actually don't know which bridge this is. I'm not familiar with the M2. Uh, I don't know which bridge this is, but it is fantastic looking. That's proper scenic. Look at the houses down here on the left. He says, driving into a wall. I'm not seeing much in the way of. Um, heavy traffic right now. The mod was definitely loaded, but uh, let's talk about what that's supposed to do so you can try it out yourself. 
So the AI traffic mod, uh, oh well. I'm moving over, pal. I'm moving over. Look at him driving into me. Do you know what just happened? Shit, do you know what just happened? Where is he? Basically, what happened then was, he came down the inside of me, I moved over, and he moved underneath the tree. Because there's a bounding box on my truck, and there's a bounding box on my rear axle, the trailer axle wheels. But in, in between, there's nothing, there's just emptiness. And he entered that, and if you if you saw the truck move, that was the rear of the trailer going over the top of his um, his car. I couldn't switch the exterior camera, um, but we just drove up. That's him, though. What the hell? That's him, though. Um, our rear trailer wheels went over the top of his car. And, he, and he's alive, apparently, with a 58-ton tree going over the top of his car. He's perfectly fine. What's interesting is because it didn't hit the truck, we didn't get charged for it. How weird's that? Okay, so what's happening with the AI traffic thing? So this guy called... Let me just, just, just read, try and read his name here for a second. Uh, let me just lock the track IR so I can read properly. There we go. Um, right, I've just noticed the bend here, so I'm just going to unlock that track IR. Basically, I've got the notes to my left there that I'm going to read, and... I don't want to keep turning and it'll annoy you, so I'm going to lock the track I are, but this is about to get very messy. Look at this bend here. Oh, crap. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. This could get ugly. Right, I'm going to stick to the outside. Come on, it didn't turn again. Yeah, we're stuck. Look at the car! We're completely stuck. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can't actually move. I can't actually move. I don't know what we're locked on. Wow. Oh, there we go. Right. Let's try and get over this way a little bit. Dear me. The problem is the car's now got jammed. <laughs> this is just insane. Look at a mighty engine here just pushing everybody out the way. This dude here. <laughs> oh my god. What on earth has just happened? I'm going to try and drive forward with a car inside my tree. <laughs> this is going really well. Just what I had planned for this video. This is possibly the most insane thing I've seen in this game so far. My front wheels aren't turning at all, if you notice. Oh, they are now. There you go. This car's about to pop out of the tree. I'm giving birth. I'm giving birth to a car. There he goes. Oh, God. We're just about able to make it up the inside, but the car came up... Oh, no. He's in such big trouble, though. This thing does not want to pull up here. I think we've got free of it, amazingly. Wow, this is seriously, seriously full of problems. Oh, we're stuck again. Oh, what now? The roads are too narrow. They're just way too narrow for this. Let's try going right along the edge here. Pick up some momentum and maybe it'll let us... There we go. There we go. <laughs> or maybe at this point I'm suggesting you don't bother with this, um, this mod. This tree. It clearly is broken to the hell and back. This game can't deal with it. The roads are just too narrow. Now we're stuck again, are we stuck again? Of course you do. Yeah, of course you do, mate. And a truck, a car just drove straight under my trailer. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. Look, watch. Look at that. 
<laughs> this gets better and better. This AI is not. Look, he's coming forward. Go away, you moron. I'm gonna get a bill for this. I'm just gonna go this way. To hell with them. I can't see how it wants to get past. Oh, God. Well, at least that car's moved now. But. If they'd actually just sit still and let me go, it wouldn't be such a problem. Oh man. I'm getting fined. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. I can't reverse now because they're in the way. I can't go forward because they're in the way. I need to get this car out of the way. This is a complete non-starter. We're pushing you out the way, that's the solution to this. <laughs> pushing out the bloody way. Oh my. Of course, the cars will be behind me, I'll just be backfilling. The cabin's freaking out. How far can we push this geezer with this 800 brake horsepower engine? That's the question. This is impressive. This is absolutely impressive. What's behind? I really wish these guys would just give me some space. Right, now, the big problem here is... The cabin's just going crazy. <laughs> oh god, I, that makes me feel sick. All we're doing is damaging everything on the road. And that's just one turn. I don't even know if this journey's possible right now. Of course, I'll probably get fined if I don't deliver it. Right, I need that guy to move, but to be fair, I've kind of left him in a bad position, so... Can I push his trailer? Can I just push him that way a bit and then I can get past? There you go, bud. I'm helping you out. Really? Just This is just one fellow truck driver to another. I'm just... <laughs> Let me past you more and move. If I could... Uh, it's just a never-ending stream of cars. Look at the traffic jam we're caused on the motorway. I'm going to try and reverse down here. I'm hoping that guy... Um, oh! He's moved! Look what he's done! That's amazing! What on earth is he doing? How can you do that? Your Renault has to possess, possesses the ability to fly. That's incredible. I wish I could get out of trouble like this. That's brilliant. I've got to move forward to see where he goes. He's just going to park himself on the grass. There he goes. Look at that. No fucks given. Oh, ho, ho, bitched. He suddenly found the crash barrier. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> right. Okay, so I've left a bit of a mess um, on the motorway. As you can see, bad things have happened. Bit of a traffic jam, bit of a crash, a lot of damage to my truck and a great deal of expense. But we're on the way, we're on the move. <laughs> I'm alright, Jack. I've never seen anything like that Renault before in this game. That is seriously amazing. It's fun watching the computer, the software cope with the most insane situations it's ever seen before. And it, they just have the truck just hover through the barriers and over the grass. It's brilliant. I think we can turn the lights off now. I have noticed something. Have you noticed or not? You may have, the observant people will have noticed this. So I'm doing 40 miles per hour, but if you look at my dashboard, if I put my light on a second, I'm showing zero. So the dashboard on the Volvo isn't working. I, I don't know why. But I mean, I can see on the display it's 45 miles per hour. I just noticed it. Oh, I don't know whether I'm laughing or whether I'm stressed. 
<laughs> that was just nuts. I really, really don't think that this journey is going to complete properly. I think I'm going to have to detach my trailer and just give up on the job. Which I've never, ever had to do before, but quite honestly. If it's like that, just getting off the motorway, what's it going to be like going through this ferry in a minute? 